on ABC Radio. Sarah McDonald with you on the evening show. And this is a lovely story now about Australian hospitality and people coming together during the time of COVID. We've heard so many stories about people who have been stranded in one place or another because of the pandemic and border closures. Well, Jin Jong has cycled 80,000 kilometres around the world and she was on her way back to South Korea when the Australian borders were closed and she found herself stuck on the Gold Coast. When Gold Coast teacher Zoe Milsom heard about Jin, she thought, I just have to meet her. And she's now living in her home. I'm joined now by Zoe and Jin, who are joining us on evenings tonight. Hello to you, Zoe. How did you hear about Jin's adventure and um, how did this come about? Hi, Sarah. Well, I don't actually remember the first time I came across Jin's uh, website or story. It was a couple of years ago now, but I just remember feeling at the time, what an amazing individual. Just all of those qualities that I admire, braveness, grit, determination, resilience. And I've just sort of followed her story along the way. And then when I saw that she was headed to the Gold Coast, I thought, well, here's my chance to meet this amazing woman and hopefully introduce her to my two young girls. I mean, what an amazing role model that they could meet. And, Jin, you've been travelling all over the world and you got stuck in Queensland of all places. How lovely was it to meet Zoe? Yeah, it was really, like, surprised when she sent me a message through Facebook and then, oh, yeah, then we had a breakfast together and then she said, oh, you should stay with us. And I really thanks her because... We are actually, you know, in third, on third time and people are afraid to invite someone there. So I was really uh, thanks to her. Well, you, because you were going to go on a holiday, I understand yourself, Zoe. So you know what it's like to be affected by the closures. Has it been like, you know, I suppose if you can't travel at the moment, if you have an international traveller with you, it's the next best thing really, or perhaps even better. That's right, Sarah. I think that was my idea, really. I just wanted to live vicariously through Jin <laughs> for a little while. We, we yeah. were supposed to be in China this year and we had to pull the pin two days before departure. So it's just been an absolute blessing for us to have Jin stay at our home. I mean, she just has so many amazing stories from all of her different travels around the world, sharing that with us. The other night, Jin reminded me that... How, how how amazing and varied the world is when my little six-year-old still wants to eat her dinner with her fingers. And I'm like, you know, pick up your knife and fork. And Jim's like, well, you know, Zoe, there are so many countries in the world where they eat with their fingers. And I'm like, you're right, Jim, that's right. So just take a step back and realise that, you know, yes, we've got lots of similarities, but we've also got lots of differences. And it's really nice to be reminded and to, yeah, for my girls, especially to experience that with Jin in our home. Oh, lovely. And so, Jin, what, what, uh, you've been on an incredible trip as you've been cycling around the world. What are you doing while you're here stuck in Australia on the Gold Coast? So I was learning surfing with Zoe at the beginning. So I go surfing almost like three or four times a week and then also I'm spending my time with Zoe's family. We cook and then dinner together and then I go to uh, their school in the morning together and I hug them and say goodbye and then I see them again in the afternoon and I hug them. So it's a great, uh, it's a great feeling to have a family around in this crisis. So, yeah. So you can cycle. You've got good balance. Obviously, now you can surf as well. You're going to move on to Brisbane soon, I understand. Are you staying in touch with your new Australian family? Yeah, I got some invitations. So I might uh, meet uh, some uh, Australian uh, friends and something like that. So, uh, yeah, but yeah, it would be a bit sad to say goodbye to Zoe's family. And, yeah. Yeah, and and and. I suppose for you, Zoe, it's, um, as you said, it's meant that you feel like you're travelling anyway. Have you um, exchanged some recipes and, and language to share in the household? Um, Jean's been cooking some amazingly delicious dinners for us since she's been here, so we've been very grateful for that. I think what's just been so lovely for us as a family is just to be able to welcome Jean into our, into our home and our hearts and I think we've gained so much more from Jin than we, I really feel like we've given back just by opening our home. So I guess I'm just so grateful that we've had this opportunity and I'm sure it's going to be 
a continuing relationship, you know, no matter where Jean is in the world, we'll still be in touch with her for sure. Yes, well, you can follow her adventures and may you get back on that road, Jean, and, and cycling to, to where you want to go next. You're heading home eventually, though, I understand. Yeah, that's my girl, but everything's uncertain, so I see how it goes and also like how coronavirus go in my country and so, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, all the best to you and thank you both so much for coming on. Uh, our families and, and, uh, and individuals who got together during corona, it's the, the good stories we need. And I thank you both so much. Thank you. Thank you. For thank you. you. Happy travels. That is uh, Zoe Milsom and Jin Jong, who cycled 80,000 kilometres around the world and was on her way home. She got stuck in the Gold Coast, but stuck with a lovely family.